Today we're gonna to learn one of the essential skills you need to know to become a furniture maker, and that's turning skinny boards into wide boards. Now back in the day, you could just head out into the forest and chop down a huge tree and you'd have a board as wide as you need it to be. Unfortunately, we can't do that anymore. So today, we're gonna to take three thinner pieces of cherry and glue them up into a larger tabletop for a side table. In order to do that effectively, we're gonna to need to understand a few things. One is how to prep your stock so it's easier along the way. We're also gonna to need to understand how to clamp and glue. And thankfully, I've got my friends at Bessie and Tightbond here with me to help me along the way. Now, before we get to the clamping and gluing though, we're gonna to need to prep our stock, and we're gonna do that over at the jointer. Now, before we start milling our lumber, we wanna think a little bit more about our tabletop. And as you can tell, I'm all about looks. So when we're laying out our boards, we want to think a little bit about grain and color um, and how they all work together. And so I've got my widest board in the middle and the two smaller boards on the outside that provides a little bit of symmetry. Um, and I just like to go through and kind of examine each side of the board. So on this one, you can see um, we've got a little bit more color there. I'm going to try to keep that on the bottom of the board. Flip that over. Okay. And then you can kind of edge them together a little bit. You can see that the grain here is going to run together. That might help mask our glue line a little bit. Um, and it does kind of the same thing over here. So I think I'm going to go with this orientation. Um, and to make sure I keep that orientation, I'm just going to draw a big triangle on the boards. Like so. We call it a cabinet maker's triangle. Now we can head over to the jointer. So the first thing you want to do on your jointer is check to make sure you have a nice square, square face. Oh, hey, Carl. <laughs> hey, Andrew. How are you doing? Good. Glad you could join us. Thanks. Uh, so you're with Bessie. Yes. Um, and what do you do for them? Uh, product development is my current job, and I've been with the company for 30 years. Okay. Started at the bottom, worked my way up, and uh, right now I deal with most of the technical aspects of all our products and uh, help customers choose the right product for the job. So you probably know more about clamps than I can ever hope to. Well, after 30 years, I hope so. <laughs> So uh, what are the clamps we have here? These are our K-Body clamps, our current um, second iteration of the K-Body Revo. The large parallel jawed clamps was an original Bessie invention, and these are our current versions. And uh, what makes these really good for gluing up tabletops? Well, for a tabletop glue up, the fact that the jaws do are large surface areas, mm -hmm. and they are parallel to each other, and not only parallel to each other, but they're perpendicular to the bar. So that leaves us with a nice square edge, a square glue up. Yes, that's all, right. all things I really like. Exactly. Um, I've, I haven't seen these uh, black pieces before. What are these? These, uh, we call them our rail protection pieces. You know, the best way to get glue off a rail is to not get it on in the first place. So that's what this allows us to do. Position them underneath the glue joint, and if there's any squeeze out on the underside, then um, it's kept off the steel with these little plastic pads and glue. They're non-reactive to most woodworking glue, so it just flakes off easily. Easy to clean. So uh, I went ahead and prepped my pieces for my tabletop here. Um, and I've heard that it's a good idea to do sort of a, a dry run. Yes. Um, so we'll get these clamped up here. Do that. And I've got my, so my triangle on the top. Maybe you need a little bit more room. All right. So I'm just going to snug these up a little bit. And so I, I notice here we, uh, we really, we only have four clamps here. Yes. How, how many clamps should we have? Um, this is about the ideal amount for this size of project. Um, clamping force tends to radiate out 
from the center of the clamp face at about 45 degrees. Okay. So we, could, we need to visualize this and see where those lines cross our glue joint. And then we want to place our next clamp so that our pressure lines overlap at that point. So you want a little bit of overlap. A little bit of overlap. That cones. guarantees a nice even amount of pressure full uh, width of the joint. So I've, uh, I've always just gone by, you know, about six or eight inches in between each clamp, but like... And that is a good rule of thumb. In most instances, it works quite well, but here's a more precise way of figuring sure, it out. Sure, I had no idea about the cone of pressure. You know, the other thing I've always, you know, I'm always curious about is how much, how much clamping pressure do you need? Is, is more better? No, not really. Okay. <laughs> we have a lot of clamping force available and sometimes it definitely is required. But when doing a glue up like this, what you really need is to just make sure that the boards are tight together. You only need enough pressure to close up the joint nice and tightly. Going beyond that is just being excessive. I'm glad we rehearsed this. I wouldn't want to have to do this under the gun with some glue going. Um, but we'll get Bob in here to talk about glue next. All right. Thanks, Carl. Good. So it looks like about time for gluing. My <laughs> hey, favorite. Hey, Bob. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. Uh, so, Bob, you're with Type Bond. Type Bond. I'm the technical service manager for Type Bond. I've been with them. Well, I've actually been in the glue business for about 30 years. So, <laughs> so I've, I've done my dry fit. I feel like my joints are coming together pretty good. They were cut fairly accurately by looks myself. Pretty good. Yep. Um, you know, and I'm just curious, what glue should I be using? How should I apply it? All that kind of stuff. Well, it's going to depend. Okay. Um, we have what we call our, you know, the big three, type on original, type on two, and type on three. Um, these two have similar working and uh, open times, and difference being type on two is water resistant, type on original is not, original being the, the product that the furniture industry really has had moved to back in, you know, after World War II. Um, type on three, um, one of the advantages for that is it will give you a little longer working time. So, so what, do you, what do you mean by working time? So when the glue gets put on the wood, the wood starts to absorb the water. Okay. Um, and so the type on three is designed to keep that wood from absorbing it as fast. These are designed to kind of set a little bit faster. Uh, in the furniture industry, uh, time is money, and sure. so you want to get the in and out of the clamps. Type on three, you may not be able to get in and out of the clamps. But again, it gives you 10 minutes of uh, open time, 20 to 25 minutes to get the uh, stuff uh, finalized in the clamps. Whereas with the original and two, it's about 10 to 15 minutes. So a little bit quicker if you're yeah, using A little those. bit quicker, so you're going to need to be a little bit faster when you use this. Type on three, a little more forgiving. And uh, how much glue should I be putting on my joints? So gluing, uh, usually you're going to be around uh, six thousandths of an inch. Um, and a lot of people go, oh, what's, what's that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is a, about... A, two sheets of copy paper. So you kind okay. of want to put enough on there to kind of make the grain look like it's just about to disappear. The other thing is we also have our type on glue brushes that we okay. use. I brought one along with me. Uh, they're designed to leave the right amount of glue on uh, if you're going to use that. Uh, the bristle diameter, bristle spacing, as you leave it, as you run it across, leaves that uh, six, <laughs> six thousandths of an inch. Interesting. So, yeah, and it's also, uh, used to be a finger gluer, I now use this, it's a lot faster to put the glue down. I'm sure it keeps your apron cleaner too. Uh, it does. Yeah. Um, so when we're looking at our uh, joints here, you know, they're, they're basically right off the jointer. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's first look at the, the edge. What you want to look at is to see if there's any burnishing on the wood at all. So, so what you want to look for is you want to look down that edge, make sure it doesn't have any shiny areas. Mm -hmm. If you find that the wood is burnished in any way, that's going to keep the glue from sticking. So it, it affects the cellulose, which is what the glue sticks to. So if that's the case, you may want to take a hand plane and just run it down there just to get rid of that, or 220, 320 grit okay. uh, in terms of getting that burnished edge off so that it, the glue can get to the cellulose. So, so this is cherry, but like on, on maple or something, you might actually see the, if you see burning, it's, yeah. it's burnished. It's absolutely burnished in that case. So again, with some of the woods, you won't see it, but you'll note it as, as kind of a glossiness to the wood itself. So, so that edge looks very good. 
Are we ready to put the glue on at this point in time? You know, I rehearsed the glue up. I, I've got my clamps. I think I'm, I'm ready to give it a try. All right. Well, we're going to, since this is an indoor table, mm -hmm. right, we're going to go ahead with that. Are, and we're ready to clamp up so there shouldn't be any issues with, with getting the glue on. Okay. So let me show you how that's done. So what you want to do is you follow along with the, the brush and you get that brushed in, get that going. This wood's pretty dry. Mm -hmm. And then you can just basically run that down the board as you go. So you're, doing, you're using both hands at the same time? Both hands at the same time. And it helps to get the right amount of glue down so that you don't have areas where there's large amounts of glue. And you can kind of feel how wet that, that is mm -hmm. as, as you go along. And you can feel it being draggy. And in those areas where it's going to be draggy, that means the glue is starting to, to set up. Um, it means your wood is a little bit on the drier side too. So as you can see how fast this goes, uh, you don't have to worry about your finger uh, getting cut on those edges. Mm -hmm. So once you get all of the wood done and glued, you can take this and with that edge, you can look at and that leaves the perfect amount of glue along the edge. And then, so at this point, you want to get your boards together. Okay. What that's going to do is that's going to stop any evaporation of the uh, water from the glue from the air. So at this point, we've now completed the open time. Now will be the total assembly time, which means you've got five to ten minutes to get that board on. All right. Okay, here you go. Give that a try. All right. Some two-handed gluing for me. This is the yeah, first. Give it a try. All right. So yeah, you only need to glue one side as long as the glue is wet enough to wet the other part of the wood. So you can kind of feel how it's a little draggy mm -hmm. here. Um, that means that the wood is nice and dry. That means it's going to set pretty nice. Okay. See how fast that goes? A little better than a finger. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> my hands are totally clean. And that, that means you're not, if you go to touch the board after that, you're not oh, getting yeah, glue I've, all over the place. So I found those fingerprints. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I used to be a, um, a finger gluer until we came out with the glue brush. And, and I, I tell you, that it works wonders on getting the right amount of glue down. All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you want to grab that in and we'll kind of slide it into place. Rub it a little back and forth. You want to make sure you wet out both sides of that glue line and we're ready to go. All right. And so we should just start applying our pressure here. There you go. You can see, mm -hmm. not extreme amounts of squeeze out, just perfect. Yeah, your, I, your squeeze out does look a little bit better than mine, <laughs> but. And that brush will help you continue to do that over mm -hmm. time because it'll be very consistent over time in the, in the amount of glue that you're gonna be adding to the glue line. So, so Bob, how do we deal with all this glue squeeze out? Because I don't wanna be sanding all day. Well, typically what we would recommend is to wait for the glue to putty up a little bit, which is basically to quasi dry. Mm -hmm. um, just before it gets too hard to scrape off, you want to get it to the point where it's not going to um, soak into the wood. So at that point, once it gets to that, and we have a few areas here, you can see where you scrape it up and, and, the, and the glue just comes up. Now, what you see on the surface, typically it'll just roll and sand off very easily. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. So I'm just going to clean up the rest of the squeeze out and I'm going to set the tabletop aside for a few days to let the glue cure. Then I'm going to go through and sand it, get it all nice and spiffy and we'll have a solid tabletop for our side table.